up everybody welcome to sketch a day live we're back happy holidays merry Quis chris merry christmas xmas holidays whatever you want to call it hope you had a good time hope you can hear me just fine it's good to be back been taking some time with the family doing my own thing made some changes in the studio changes you can't see but if you have an eagle eye maybe you'll notice um but i'll be giving a tour of that at some point in the near future because i've been recording and i want to show you what i did so that being said let me adjust the camera here there we go all right now i should be nice and centered anyhow much love to all of you thanks for being a part of the show today i'm gonna to keep it short ish so i'm shooting for about an hour i got a request on the discord uh server so i'm gonna tackle that today the request was to do let's see a snowmobile and then some like tricky perspective stuff so we're gonna see if we can figure it out a little bit and uh go from there all right so let's switch over here special shout out and thanks to the patrons channel members as always thank you for your support and for making this year better than it could have been much appreciated much love hello lori Hendrick Marzi, Peaky, Mighty Geek Studios, what's up? Jose, Latrice, welcome back. Vasisht, hello, hello. And Elizabeth, I think you're new. Anyhow, let's let's get started. I feel rusty <laughs> the whole intro thing. So <laughs> if you're watching on Instagram, um, just a heads up. I did post a link there to the YouTube. That's where I kind of want you guys to go. I've been working really hard at getting content out to you. So at least surfacing the content it's really hard it seems to uh combat these these algorithmic things so anyhow let's get started paper made flare markers let's go anisa hello yeah so i i'm i'm trying a lot of different setup things here so it's probably gonna take me a few uh episodes a few rounds on the live to get used to it Make sure things are good. Yeah, anyway, we're streaming a little bit later than I normally come on, but that's okay. I uh, it's Christmas break, no school for the kids. Got some projects to do, so it's helping with some Lego stuff today. Um, like I said, redoing some stuff in the studio. Start with some circles. I actually haven't drawn in a minute, so I'm like. I wouldn't say nervous, but I'm sure I'm a little bit rusty here, so <laughs> I took a few days off to just chill. Man, 2020 coming to a close. Pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. Time flies. But we can keep it chill today. Pen and paper. Be a little bit more on the instructive side. Certainly conversational, as we always are. If you want to ask a question, head over to YouTube. That's where I'm paying attention to the chat. You Instagram freeloaders. Just kidding. <laughs> I give I give Instagram a hard time, but I love you all. And when I say Instagram, it's not so much the people as it is the platform. But I'm not going to go off on a rant about that today. Let's just keep it chill. All right, so we got some circles. Let's do some ellipses here. Coffee cup in the way. A little bit better there. There we go. All right, should we do a warm-up car? Is that what we should do? Should we do a warm-up car after our, our ellipses here? I think I think that's a good idea. We could do a quick warm-up car. I promise it won't be digital. I won't uh, put it in the 3D meat space, so to speak. Creating an augmented reality sketch. So let's take a long time. I don't really get the point, but... If you have no idea what I'm talking about, check out my Instagram story slash post today. Music brought to you by Paul Sohi. But now that I've kind of, so I'll verbally describe what I've done. I built some new storage. I'm gonna be building some marker storage after the show today. And I'm just trying to get it done. So that's one reason I wanna keep it kind of short here. Just warming up with some ellipses, small degree, bigger and bigger as we move down the page. All right, so the request was from Andrew. I don't know if Andrew's watching. Let's see. I don't see Andrew watching, but if you're watching, 
Mr. Drew, Andrew, where you're going to rewatch, you will get your snowmobile wishes granted. Anyone get anything fun for Christmas? Were you able to find a PS5, an Xbox Series X? You know, it's it's really interesting. I haven't seen anyone unboxing an Xbox or proudly displaying it, and I don't know why that is. Is it just me or is it you guys? I had a, I had a little argument with a friend who was like, well, it's because the pre-orders didn't come through. I was like, no, the pre-orders started at the same time, man. They've been they've been selling. What's up, NYC Tours? I was like, they've been selling those Xboxes, so why is no one showing off their brand new Xbox? I, I just, I don't get it, right? Anyhow, let's just sketch some quick vehicle here just to, to warm up. It's starting to look like a Batmobile already, but I'll take, I'll take it. I'll take the forms, see what we can do. But yeah, it's, it's, it's really weird. I'm just like... I've been into these uh, cars that have the, the flares, the fenders all the way down recently, so pardon my excess here as we sketch this out, but let's give Andrew a minute if he's going to show up. I'm not sure. I didn't really announce this in the Discord, but um, I did mention that I would try and do some sort of snowmobile thing today, so... Let's see how we do. All right, just a quick, quick warm up car here. Definitely has a Batmobile vibe. I did not receive anything for Christmas. Well, that's not true. I got hugs and love. That's a good gift. I'm actually not a big gift person personally so I am totally fine with that totally a-okay with that one anyhow like I said I've been kind of digging this like crazy Batmobile-esque aesthetic lately it's kind of fun what we can come up with here so as I'm sketching this in, I'm trying to just map out some highlights um, just mapping out some highlights here giving this thing at least some dimension the inking guide is almost almost done I'm actually thinking about releasing that and the digital at the same time so I have started working on a digital sketch guide and the idea behind these guides is just to kind of answer questions, get people started, not really a comprehensive tutorial type thing. Um, although the inking guide has like five tutorials in it, different tools. What's up? Screams in pain. <laughs> Hello and goodbye. Most people like PS5 over Xbox. Samsung Note Ultra 5G. Ooh, nice, Lorenz iPad Pro 11 inch. Looks like everyone had some good Christmas stuff. Wireless earbuds. Did anyone get the uh, AirPods Max by Apple? $550 headphones. Don't answer that if you did. <laughs> They're so expensive. Just so expensive. I feel like, um, since Lori is here, I'll say this. I feel like doing another fashion week soon. Um, technically, the theme this week was Christmas, but admittedly, I lost the thread on that. I apologize. I I was going to stream, and I was like, you know what? I need a break. I don't want to, I don't want to, like, burn out and then never want to come back on again. So I'm glad I took, I'm glad I took a little break and kind of just recharged um, and refreshed. Cause you don't wanna, you don't wanna overdo it and then hate what you do ever. And people, people ask me a lot. You know, how do you, how do you stay creative? How do you keep drawing? I'm like, you know, I mean, it is, it is draining, but it's also fun. Um, at the same time, you gotta, you gotta save some time for yourself. Make sure you're doing the whole self care thing. Can't be working all the time so i was able to take a couple days and just chill for one um the other was uh just 
working on some things that I wanted to that I felt kind of behind on. So again, just a just a nice little chill, chill show today. I've also been doing a lot more painting. I'm excited to show you guys some stuff. Um, but yeah, I've been doing a lot more digital painting here and there. So that's been fun. You should try it if you have an iPad or something like that. Really fun to get into. Really, really fun. All right, so there's there's my warm-up car of the day for you. Some sort of Batmobile thing. Sorry, I'm a little sniffly too. My apologies in advance. <laughs> Maybe I should turn my little thumbnail off. Um, didn't get anything, but I have all the things I need. That's the spirit, Latrice. That's the spirit. I, I can agree with you there and relate a ton. All right, so snowmobiles um the first thing and i've done this many times with you guys before is i like to um take a minute just to familiarize myself with the object so you know if there's linkages or like technical aspects to it take a look at it maybe some different perspectives now when it comes to sketching technical things my advice would be to um spend your time drawing the right thing in the right size and context so here you'll see me do this as i draw um for those watching on instagram you can't see because you can't see my screen shares you can't see all the graphics and all the other cool stuff um so looking at the object you know we kind of have a big mass here we've got two sled uh pieces and they seem stylized and then we've got this track in the middle all right so i'm thinking mass skis not sled skis and track all right and i can figure out the rest of it in between there so i think what i'll do is i'll draw this twice okay i'll draw the snowmobile twice and the idea here being um just a way to show you two different approaches maybe one of them quick gray marker the other one um i'll do uh more of a, a tighter not tighter but maybe a little bit cleaner drawing so <clears throat> yeah if i'm if i'm sketching something especially if i don't um Especially if I'm not used to it. Sloffy is saying, how can I buy a drawing? Hit me up after the show. Um, I do commissions from time to time. All right. So yeah, not necessarily a cleaner, but I'll, I'll throw more marker and effects and maybe some airbrush and stuff on it. But this first this first sketch is, is, is more meant to just kind of get me... Get me in the range of like some reality here so just some quick lines all right quick lines maybe some indication of a seat of some sort all right there's there's a, a nice center line for the front of our snowmobile i'm not really thinking of a specific design here but just trying to make an allowance and accommodation for those elements so skis maybe drop some lines there lines here for example all right, maybe there's a little, little box or um, you know, footrest or something. I don't know. We're just just kind of riffing here, making sure. And I am looking at um, a sketch, or not a sketch, a photo, sorry, just to make sure I get at least, you know, overall. So overall perspective here. I'm trying to go front to back, right? Uh, bigger in the front, smaller in the back. Kind of like the mullet of illustration. That is perspective. The mullet of illustration. Bigger in the front, smaller in the back. So, um, just to, just you know, simple guidelines to kind of help you. That being said, I should take a promotional break. Oh, I'll do it. I'll do it after after the uh, snowmobile here. Um, something exciting I want to share with you. All right. So here, maybe some sort of visor thing. All right, I would go back over. So we have a little little edge there, something like that. And we need, it appears, it appears that these things can be steered, right? So throw in a quick line there. Maybe break the line, come back down, break, come back down. Cylinder, cylinder. So. My sketch style does tend to be a bit looser and rougher, but I, I find that if I can move quickly enough, okay, if I can move quickly enough, I'm really not a fan of these like outdoor sports designs personally, but I just, 
just think they're kind of crazy. Um, but if, if I move a little quicker, then I can be a little bit more gestural in my form. Maybe find some uh, unexpected or I'm trying to think of the right word, happy surprises in terms of form discovery. And as you increase the line weight, these are things I do talk about in that guide that is forthcoming. All right, in that that inking guide. But as you as you move quickly and then just work lightly, just really lightly with the pen. So notice notice how I'm holding the pen I'm about halfway up the barrel. All right. Someone on Instagram says, please save the live. The lives are saved on YouTube. That's it. I'm kind of done with Facebook. <laughs> they just the, the it's not an equitable relationship in terms of how much creators put into the platform so if you want to catch it catch it on youtube so they actually i think care about creators um i suspect facebook's going to change that i noticed there's some new features that have popped up in the app um but they're always testing stuff anyways i just they just rub me the wrong way so Anyhow, where was I? Um, <laughs> so, yeah, if you work lightly, so even though this line is here, for example, I may want to change change this, this little sled. And I think, I think this is actually too far forward. So I'm just going to make a little little change here, throw a little line across. All right, just keep it nice and nice and loose. All right, so bigger in the front, smaller in the back. <laughs> Um, and then I'll just kind of hint at some sort of linkage here. Like I'm not, I'm not terribly concerned about the precision. Usually I will say, um, so there's different, there's different types of design, right? And you don't have to necessarily be, shall I say engineering minded, um, if you're designing and I will qualify what I'm saying. So don't go run off and say, Spencer said you don't have to be engineered minded as a designer. Tell your professors and then they get mad at me or your boss or whatever. Um, there's just different types of design. So some, some like when you jump into uh, certain products for certain companies, there's gonna be engineering work done already. So this language, this not language, this linkage and carrier system, for example, might have already been engineered. So it's not my job necessarily to figure this out, but I can visually represent and say, hey, let's use um, this model's linkage system here and see if we can come up with something. Now, the other type of design is, yeah, where you're actually trying to innovate and come up with, with something new. And in those instances, you're actually working, at least in my experience, I should qualify what I'm saying by saying, in my experience, in my experience, you're typically working with uh, like a an engineering team, okay? And as a designer, you're not going to be held accountable for creating necessarily mechanically sound, safe designs, but within reason, this track is off actually, so it should be in the middle here. So I'm going to do a little cheat and fix it. Um, so I don't know if you can see that, but right here, if I draw an X, between these points this is about the middle if i draw that back that tells me where the middle of the track should be so the track is actually supposed to be like like this for example so that's wrong and i'm happy to show you that because um you know i was, I was telling a friend actually recently that i used to be very afraid of like showing mistakes when i went live because i didn't want people Oh, he doesn't know what he's doing. But at the same time, I mean, if you think about what I do, it's all about teaching. And so I want to show you, in effect, how I deal with, work with, with mistakes, um, correct things as necessary. Anyhow, so that other type of design, right, where you are kind of innovating, usually you're going to have some sort of engineering help, someone there to help, uh, you know, validate your idea. I mean, it can't be... Hey, we're gonna make a flying vehicle and then you're, you're trying to defy the laws of physics so you have to be mechanical mechanically minded to the extent that you're willing to push common convention or um you know what's already out there and try some new stuff 
I prefer Procreate over Sketchbook because the paint bucket is trash. <laughs> Interesting. I mean, that's that's one way to look at it, I'm sure. Digital sketching. We're just doing paper today. I'm just keeping it, keeping it simple. We're just doing a little warm-up sketch here of a snowmobile thing. We already did this quick car. All right. So a little bit of a sketch and chat. We'll go over some perspective stuff as well. All right. So I do wish I had drawn this a little bit further off um, the page just because this this ski is like, you know, way too far over. Um, as a reminder, as always, these sketches will be available to patrons and YouTube channel members. That just means that you guys are throwing down the cold hard cash for support, which I do appreciate. So I know I'm being silly, but it does mean a lot. Um, and of course you get all the guides for free. Special Discord channel. Welcome again to Clark, one of our new patrons. Clark, and I think uh, Fatboy Dre was the other one, so thank you. All right, so now I can kind of take this sketch, you know, if I were working it all the way to completion. Like I said, I just kind of wanted to do a rough, rough sketch here um, to start. But if I were taking this all the way to completion, then... Yeah, I could take some time and, you know, work on these line weights and details, things like that, but we'll just keep it loose for now. All right, maybe some hatching here for bone and shadow. We'll cover this up a little bit under here. But yeah, definitely appreciate the support. It means a ton. Um, all right, I, I've also learned this year that visual communication or art-based uh, live streaming is not <laughs> that popular so I'm always I'm always happy when let's see we got about 40 people watching I'm always, I'm always happy when you guys tune in and, and watch so um, even that is you know super awesome welcome and so forth all right so there's there's a quick snowmobile without um, you're welcome Clark good to see you um, yeah so quick sketch, warm up. Now let's do a quick marker sketch of a snowmobile. And I should say ideally, oops. Ideally what I would do is draw this from multiple perspectives, multiple points of view, and then see, um, yeah, multiple points of view, and then see like, okay, can I understand what's happening here? and do it in a way that that makes sense all right so let's see all right so yeah if you if you're just sketching the forms you've seen me do this before as well where you can kind of do some quick side view thing thanks for joining applejax by the way um i know you said you were going to join the next live and then i didn't so appreciate you being here uh, today. All right, so sometimes you can start with, you know, some sort of side view and then kind of figure out the front. Like I said, I definitely sketch a lot looser. And it's been interesting because um, even my, this looks like a, an animal of some sort. My college professor at the time had said, oh, you know, the better you get at sketching, the looser you're going to get. And I was like, what? And it's kind of true. You you essentially get comfy, comfortable, comfy, comfortable with yourself and um, how you draw. And then, you know, you know, you can fix certain things or um, you can kind of imagine the context you're going to use something in. And it gets a little bit easier. And at this point, you know, this this is more like a what I would consider to be visual notes to self. All right. Um, this is actually a good point for me to break because I do want to show you something. Um, so kind of like I mentioned before, uh, discovery is kind of hard. It's, it's kind of hard on YouTube. So I've noticed like you go to YouTube and you search for 
industrial design sketching or product sketching or even some of the illustration stuff I've done and you like literally can't find it, it doesn't show up. So what I decided to do was go through all my videos and start pulling out um, tutorials for you guys. So it's not super organized by any means, but it's at least organized. This is my website. It's at least organized into a few things like here's some general sketching videos that you guys can take a look at, right? All the links are there. Um, if you're interested in industrial design sketching, uh, transportation is there as well. We've got people. I need to update the thumbnails and stuff, but I'm going to be pulling out all those videos. And frankly, it gives me a chance to see, hey, Spencer, how much stuff have you done in each of these categories? And is there an opportunity to do some more? So I'm going to try and do some more people stuff and shoes and footwear, right? There's some architecture, uh, things with nature, painting and illustration. And then I've mentioned before that I've been on Adobe Live. So I just dumped a bunch of links here, but these are... Um, just hours and hours of me painting, drawing, explaining stuff. Um, specifically with their product um, on iPad or it could be Photoshop sometimes that I use. So you can check that out and that's Adobe Fresco or Photoshop. So if you just go to the website, hit on video list, you'll see that. I'm going to be including a top, like my top picks for the month or whatever at some point um, as a part of that. but just to help you guys out um, and make it a little easier to find things. So that is now live. All right, so back to our snowmobile here. So the first, the first way I went about this was to draw the snowmobile kind of gesturally and quickly. And so now let's try and calculate a little bit and see if we can draw something perhaps a bit more measured. All right, so here, I've got a base if I want to find the middle of that base just an X like so so now this is half we have half right there <clears throat> right I know my track is gonna be somewhere here so I can start sketching and just just again just super rough sketching that in all right I want my skis right here as I say skis I'm reminded of the time that I'll just say it because I don't think he's watching, but um, an old boss of mine took us, took us skiing, and I didn't, I didn't know anything about skiing, man. Right? I didn't know anything about skiing. So, okay, so let me let me explain this as I tell you the story. So what I'm doing here is I'm just drawing planes, really loose lines, okay? Because the marker, the pen, everything else I do is gonna help cover this up. And yeah, it's in the same perspective. I, I realized that I could have rotated this and done, you know, some other interesting perspective, maybe a lower angle like that, or we could have had maybe a more forced forward perspective, right? So two different ways to draw this plane, but we'll just, we'll just keep it, keep it as is for now. All right. I do want to reference where is where is the steering assembly typically? I just got to make sure. All right, so it's a, it's set a little bit back from the skis. So this line could be here, for example. And then now I'll just draw a little triangle, a line down the middle, and then kind of just do some lines like so. And this is starting to give me a little bit of body. All right, so skis. I I went uh, skiing with an old boss and. He was trying to teach us, you know, me and a, a few other people, how to ski. And it was interesting because, I, was, I mean, I grew up on a tropical island. I don't, you know, I'm not like a skier or winter sports person by any means. I know it's weird. I live in Utah. I don't, um, I don't particularly enjoy or do the winter sports thing. But anyhow, he, uh, he takes us out and I could not stand up on my skis i kept falling i didn't know how to turn it was miserable it was completely miserable my shins were hurting because you have to like lean into the skis apparently and i don't think i had wide enough skis because there was lots of powder utah is known for its powdery snow it was terrible all right so learned how to do the the big uh what do i call it big pizza pizza slice thing where I don't know if this is accurate, but I'm just going to do it anyways. It looks cool. A little bit of an angled 
angle approach to the ski there. Okay, this one will be angled back and then forward. All right, cool. So notice what I did there. I just picked a point, went over, drew a little line in. Not a big deal. Anyhow, so I kept falling down and he would just keep yelling, skis to the trees, skis to the trees. And I was just like on the verge of tears. It was bad. It was bad. Like I said, I'm not... I'm not uh, from a snowy place, like originally. So it was just, it was just so traumatic, but I love him. He's a, he was a good friend. He was a better friend than boss, actually. Um, and we're still friends. So that's why I'm like, if he watches this, he'll understand. <laughs> it's not a big deal. <laughs> but man, that was, that was something. It was something. All right. So back here now, down to the front. Just kind of mapping this out. Okay, so we need something for our rider to rest their foot on, I believe. If you're right, you don't want your your feet to be out in the snow. So I'm gonna drop in. Let's see. I'll just use this shape here. We'll drop in a little, maybe inset, inset thing. Feet. Put some treads on it or something. Should we use the air compressor today? I think these things have lights, but correct me if I'm wrong. We'll call this one the stinger. The stinger. Maybe I'll use uh, black and yellow. Black and yellow, black. Um, so skis to the trees, my friends, remember. But yeah, by the end of the day, I did learn how to finally turn and skis and that was it was a triumph it was a painful triumph but i did it ask me if i've been back since then nope so yeah not not a huge fan of uh skiing really how are we on time? I've already drawn three things, so let's see, let's see. How we doing? How you doing? 32 minutes, nice. What's up, TJ? Oh, Provo, hey, hey. Are you at the uh the Y? The BY. That's the local university here. At least not the one of the universities. All right, so now I'm gonna kind of use some line weight to pull out elements on this drawing. Okay. So like our outline here, maybe something for this little visor thing. And hopefully you can see this is now starting to take shape a little bit. Oh, nice, graduated. Industrial design, I assume. Something else. You just like drawing. You like the markers. All right. So I want to show these like nice big paddle, whatever things here. And then since this is snow or something, I'll just kind of hint at maybe some tracks this thing was riding in. I feel like it should be a little bit taller, um, but I'm just gonna roll with it. We'll roll with it. Maybe I can, maybe I can resurrect, resurrect, rescue, rescue it. Pulled some little visual tricks. Oh, nice. But yeah, even, even this sketch, if you were uh, discerning, fastidious, uh, a glutton for punishment, you could overlay this again, right? Before you commit to the final sketch, and then at least you could get something cleaner out of it. But I just wanna show you at least how I would approach drawing something like this. Thanks again for joining, this is Sketch Day Live. 
Appreciate you hanging while I kick off some rust from the holidays. Just a little bit though. I have been painting, not drawing so much. Maybe painting is just making me a, a lot looser too. Not quite sure. But anyhow, either way, it's all fun. It's all good times. So this is essentially sketching without an underlay too. That's the other um, note here I would mention. So if you are interested in pen and ink, remember the inking guide is coming out. The patrons already have a draft of it. So if you haven't yet and you want to check it out, patrons channel members, just hit up the Google Drive folder and you can check out your free copy, the draft anyways. And once I, once I get all the bugs out, I'll release that, that final version. You guys can check it out. So yeah, the, the the outdoor adventure motorsports graphics are always kind of a struggle for me. But let's see if we can do something at least uh, inspired by a hornet or something. I feel like the front kind of feels very hornet-like. So let's see what we can do here. And then we'll tackle our little perspective conundrum. Talk about it. See how you feel about it. If you feel tingly inside or if you're feeling happy and you know it and you want to clap your hands. All right, so I'm just going to extend this out a little bit just for shadow purposes. And I think I'll just do just a simple... Simple little drop shadow there. Uh, let's see, back wheel, need some reference. Looks like we got some, got some stuffs going on here, typically. So I'm just gonna throw in two like wheelie thingies. That's the technical term, by the way, wheelie thingies, in case you're wondering. All right, cool. So there's my quick snowmobile. So now let's add some color. Let's have some fun. So yeah, my next project in the studio is going to be um, sorting out my marker storage some more. So always improving man i mean i've looked i've looked at videos and pictures of the studio over the last year and a lot of stuff has changed what's up sticky also tacked on two ads thank you oh you mean youtube did i'm sorry i'm sorry they are monetizing me i guess sorry about the delay there um hope you're doing well drawing keeping it up So yeah, if you guys really wanted to, I could do an overlay, but I don't feel like it. <laughs> and I know I say that and I'll probably end up doing an overlay like, okay, here's what it looks like, but. All right, so just some yellow, maybe there, maybe on the inside, could be kind of cool. Having the yellow right here. Definitely the front, I want these to be yellow. So I'm just gonna block that in. I don't even know what this is. I know it's I know it's a sled, but I don't know what this is called. This little support that I've noticed or seen on these. Someone is ringing my doorbell. Oh well, they're gonna have to wait. Oh, my gingerbread house? Nah, man. I, I did not do well enough on that to uh, submit it. I actually looked at looked at it after the stream, and I was like, eh. Eh. If I were doing a real one, then I would uh, I would definitely kick it up a notch. But, yeah, I'll have to 
have to pass on that, but I appreciate it. When's your, uh, when's your contest coming to collect entries? When's that gonna happen? I think that's my kid's neighbor friend that just showed up, but I really can't tell, so. All right, so we got some yellow in there. I think that's good. Prizes and the bar is low. Do you mean like an actual bar or like a figurative bar? Just kidding. Maximum dad joke, engage. I'm trying to think if my, oh, I did hear a good dad joke. I'm gonna steal this. My friend told me their offspring told them this joke. No, maybe I won't do it because I don't remember the delivery. I don't want to. I don't want to butcher it. But my kid's been working on his jokes. That's been kind of fun. So you can see by adding the marker now, right? It's starting to kind of help pull out the design a bit. Here, I know that's going to be dark. I cheated on this little section, but. Don't tell anyone, just the people that watch the video. So like when I post it, don't be like, oh, Spencer, you cheated. Just kidding. You can do that if you want to. I don't mind. That's a little gray in there. And let's see. Hmm. I think I'm going to do just like a nice dark section here on the front with just a nice bold highlight right there that's what i want to do so this is just a 50 percent gray so now i can up it to a 70 percent gray All right we'll keep going i should do some sort of giveaway actually it's a good good idea sticky it's about time you guys been watching long enough i started watching uh lovecraft country though on hbo kids it's not for you if you're watching it but holy cow i was like the first two episodes of this series feel like an entire tv show and then you like come across another episode and i won't spoil anything for you guys if you're planning on watching it but um it is set in i believe the 50s or 60s in america so it's like racial tensions but it's like a sci-fi mystical show oh it looks like it was an amazon delivery um like a sci-fi mystical magical thing as well anyhow holy cow that's that's a show and a half if you haven't seen it yet it's it's crazy all right so just deepening deepening some reflection stuff here we'll work on line weight that kind of thing what's up robert robert hansen language sasura bull on Instagram language what am I making I'm doing a snowmobile yeah it's HBO only so I did get HBO max for the Wonder Woman thing it was decent it wasn't my favorite uh, movie I guess but Wonder Woman was decent. What do you guys think? Did you like it? Oh, Latrice says great show. Yeah, man. Like, I'll have to maybe I'll have to chop it up with you after because holy, woof. I'm like, what is happening? What? What? And then something else will happen, and you're just like, oh, wow, wow. Crazy stuff. All right, so hopefully, Andrew, this tickles your pickle and scratches your itch for you. Wanting to see. <laughs> see some sort of snowmobile type thing. Hopefully. All right, I'm going to need my white pens or white pencil. So 
So hopefully I have something here because all my stuff right now in my studio, not all of it, but a lot of it is everywhere. It's, I'm not used to having it. Yeah, Wonder Woman was great. Um, visual effects. The tree says nice eye candy. Visual effects are awesome. Queen's Gambit is good. I play chess. And normally I will hold off watching anything to do with chess because I actually know how the game works and I used to play competitively. Well, I say competitively, but it was really just high school. I don't want to offend anyone who actually plays competitively here, but at least at the uh, ranked nationally and so forth level, but Queen's Gambit's a good one. Lots of lots of good life lessons, but as well, just an overall solid show. Super solid. All right, probably have to bring out some black here. I said these like motorsports graphics are always just so over the top I feel like so I'm gonna try and be somewhat over the top as well <clears throat> all right so at this point I think what I can work on um, is just hinting a little bit of blue in the snow we'll do a shadow um, I'll finish out some of these metal parts and then we'll jump to our perspective problem and see if we can solve it live. I have not researched it. Super disclaimer there. Super duper disclaimer. The other thing I've been doing in the video descriptions as well in as time allows and as, as I have a moment to just kind of sit is I'm taking these streams, so they're all saved, but I'm bookmarking uh, points or I guess chaptering it out so that, you know, if you just want to jump to the snowmobile marker rendering or something, that that is easy to do as opposed to having to go through the whole video to find where you want. So I'm, try I'm trying to make it easier for people to find stuff just because it is so frustrating and difficult that you know, these platforms and services, like I said, they don't really help you. Or rather, they don't they don't help me as much as I thought or imagined. So I'm just like, yo, can you just bookmark some stuff for me? Help people find things and search, be useful. So yeah, I will be I will be streaming this week. Um, I know I said that last time, and then you didn't see me. But I really, I really just wanted to take some time off and spend some time with the kiddos, which was great. They got a telescope, so we've been we've been kind of playing with that here and there. That's been fun in the evenings. Um, I don't really know what I'm looking at. I'm just like, look, a star. <laughs> no, we'll just look at it. But uh, it's fun, nonetheless. All right, I do need to do something here. I do need to do. You said doo-doo. Um, I do need to shade this in. So just to help obscure, I'm going to do, what's that, C9. And then we'll jump to 7 since this is an upward facing surface. So all that pen mess we kind of cleaned up here and now I can take this marker pen as I refer to it in my marker guide or sorry, pen guide that's forthcoming. Anyhow, I can take this now and just kind of clean up the outlines a little bit. 
Now remember, important to draw with your shoulder. Unless it's really small like I am doing here. And you have the confidence to control it. But I'd highly recommend drawing with your shoulder when you can. Especially if you're doing it on paper. You know, there's no, no digital tools here to, to help out. Oh, also, thanks to those who have been sharing their workspaces on Discord. I know Latrice threw down. We had Andrew, a few others, throwing down. I see you. All right. I know I keep saying new music's coming. I was supposed to get some new music by now, but then... It's been severely delayed and I don't know why, so I think I'm just going to have to make my own. So that's the other thing I've been trying to learn in the background is just making my own beats. Should be fun. Should be good times. Do I ever name my sketches? Sometimes. Octavius is on the wall back there. I mean, he's covered up right now. But we did do Octavius in Fashion Week. Our steampunk uh, person. Latrice says, I have a very modest set. Whatever, man. I was just like, holy cow. <laughs> That's legit. I was like, that is legit. Maybe you inspired me a little bit. Okay, how blue is that? That's too, too blue. Too blue. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to be doing my um, marker storage setup. You guys can't see this, but... Well, actually, if I switch the A camera, you can see it. So right here where there's a black spot, I'm gonna build a thing that'll basically just keep all my markers at a slightly inclined angle. Um, so I can remove the, the lid and just get to them pretty easily. So that's my plan. And I'm gonna document the process and show you the, show you the design and all of that stuff. I'm talking way too fast. All right, so a little bit of blue here for some snow, snow effect. Sometimes snow has that like, you know, very light blue look to it. And you guys, if you watch me, you should know why that is. It's because the sky might fall. Just kidding. No, the sky um, is giving it a bluish tone. So that's why. All right. So then for the shadow now, I'm going to use my cool gray three. So I don't be too dark. All right, so the perspective problem we're going to look at next is how do you draw essentially multi-point perspective, but also rotating things in that multi-point perspective. So um, that's what I'm going to go over next. And like I said, I haven't gone over it myself. So if I need to go do my homework and come back, you know, on the next stream and be like, okay, I figured it out. Cool. But I think, I think we can figure it out. I think, I think there's enough to figure it out. So... That's my plan. We're just gonna we're just gonna try and roll with it, restyle it, see what we can come up with. Oh yeah, the white pen. White pen and white pencil. I wanted to bring out these like little tread pieces here. On this little not really I guess it is tread like pieces, but just on this little footrest area. You know, if, if you need to, you can add some white here and there in your, in your dark spots as well. So super handy. You need to bring out some details or show something. And you've already gone dark. Just use a little white to help pop things for you. So a little quick tip there. 
All right, so hopefully this answers your question, Andrew. You can kind of see some of the construction lines, but uh, most of it's gone away because of the color and the line weight. And if you really had to, you could do another drawing, just do an overlay and it'll make it look that much better. It is kind of thin in the back, like I said, but maybe it's sunken in the snow. That's what I'm going to say. So when I post it and someone's like, the back of that's actually incorrect. They'll be like, no, man, it's just sinking in the snow. It's all good, brother. All right. So perspective problem. Man, we're going fast today. This is good. It's good. It's good. Thanks for joining. All right. So let's say you have a horizon line. Something like that. Maybe I should record this segment so I can re-upload it. Start recording. All right. So let's say we have a horizon line. It's not perfectly horizontal on the page. We got a VP here, a VP there. Normally you might draw a cube, okay, something like this. And we'll just do a two-point perspective just to keep it keep it simple here. Well, I'll just call it a box. Busting out the 12s. I just hit the lid with the box. Yep. All right. So maybe this is one of our boxes. We sketch and so the question was what if you want to do some multi-point perspective well you can do that um in a scene so usually i'll keep the same vanishing point but let's say you know you want to extend this horizon line out you could do something like this Here's another object. Okay, so a bit of a multi-point perspective here. Or better yet, if let's say we want to rotate, that's actually a better way to describe it, if you're rotating a face. So here, let's say I draw a face first, and now this line is no longer collinear with that line. Same thing here. It's no longer collinear. So it's there's there's a slight rotation this way on this cube. All right, just a slight rotation there. So let's say we did have a face like so. All right, this vanishing point's now way off the edge of the paper that way. And now I'm gonna have a vanishing point, say like maybe here, all right? So that's how you kind of rotate something. So Andrew's question was, okay, what if you have a multi-point perspective? We can keep doing this, right? So if I wanna rotate this way now, and have, let's see, let me think about this. Kind of have to think about it. So if I want to do another object, wait a minute. Okay, let's do one. Yeah, like so. All right, let me have a vanishing point here. Maybe it's the same one, close to it. And this one could move, okay? Because the face is rotated, it's no longer the case that everything is 90 degrees. So if I'm looking down at this scene, what I'm actually seeing and there are ways to calculate this guys. Um, I do have videos on, Oh, thank you, Clark. Much appreciated. Much love to you. Um, there are, I do have a video on like constructing two point, two point and one point perspective, and you can use that method and extrapolate and figure this out. So essentially what we have is from the top, if I'm looking at this, okay, you may have a box like this. Okay. Normally I would draw things somewhat like this, right? If I'm looking and these are all the tops. But if I want to take this 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 uh box for example and rotate it right now i'm gonna have the box touching these four corners but it's in the same perspective scene so that's what's causing right and and, and these lines aren't converging obviously but that's what's causing the separate vanishing point okay so the object's rotated if you want to see me calculate one we can do it Let's do it real quick. And then the other question was, okay, well, what if the, what if the cube is now on the side? All right. So first step would be figure out your horizon line, something like so. All right. Now let's draw a regular box cube. Oops. Where did my chat go? 
That was weird. Sorry guys, the chat disappeared and I'm not comfortable with that. <laughs> That's interesting. All right, there we go. Woo, it's back. All right, so let's say I have some shape right here, okay? And this isn't super precise. You guys know I don't use rulers and things like that, but if you wanted to use a ruler, we could we could use a ruler. All right, so let's say you have, and let's try and make it somewhat square. So I'm gonna try my best because what I wanna show is how you rotate the square object. Okay, so let's say we have the top of our cube like so. Now I could, right, I could scribe an ellipse on the top here so that these four points are touching. That is the same as if I had a circle and a square in the circle, okay? Now watch what happens if I, let's see, Let's find the center of our ellipse. And let's just pick, let's pick some new points. So here, 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 and here. It should be the same. It should absolutely be the same because we're just rotating, right? It's like taking this point and rotating it up to there, right? So this should be, in theory, the same shape. Now, obviously I'm sketching it so it doesn't look the same, but it should be the same shape. All right. So if I now connect those points, all right. So if I go one, two, three, and four, and then drop down. Okay. And if I were to do the same thing on the bottom, all right, an ellipse that was big enough to have these tangent. And let's see, we found the lines right here, or the points rather. Hopefully this makes sense. We would end up with a shape like this. Okay, so now I've now rotated my cube in perspective. And look at what happened to the vanishing points. Okay, this should actually converge on the line, but let's pretend, let's pretend it's super accurate. <laughs> but these points are gonna converge now right at a different vanishing point that now appears to have moved this way and we'll have another vanishing point off to the side pretty cool right so that's how you look at something like a multi-point perspective and if i wanted to stack these boxes that are rotated right i might end up with something like this okay so in architecture um this is used quite a bit Right, if you have a building and you have these like shapes that are rotated to each other, there's my overhang right there. Maybe there's a little shadow here cast or something. All right, there's my overhang. Maybe I have another shadow. I haven't calculated it, but um, point being, you can stack things and rotate them if you use this method, All right? Because again, ordinarily, when you're looking in a perspective scene, a lot of times we just draw things where all the, the planes, the faces are parallel to each other. But what happens when you now rotate, okay? And that is the answer right there. So similarly, if I have a scene, this is the type of stuff I do in my workshops, by the way, um, kind of go in a little bit, go a little bit more in depth people so if you're looking to um you know really get in there and learn some stuff that's what i do um typically in my workshops all right so let's say we have another cube here and i'll use a cube again because it is simple to understand all right so let's see if this answers andrew's question which was what happens when you rotate it this way now Okay. Well, I would need to, again, scribe an ellipse such that it is tangent, essentially, to all these points. Now, I'm not super accurate here, but you can see we had four points. 
and all of a sudden I wanted the points here and here and this is 90 degrees to each, to each other but one okay we'll have two three and last time we talked about something I hopefully you guys remember what that was but we talked about let's see if, if you remember some I think Apple Jacks was here what do you remember we talked about we talked about some special vanishing points What was it we talked about? Let's play the game. Guess what the teacher is thinking? Yay! Just kidding. All right. So here you can see, right? If I connect these, connect these edges on my now rotated cube in this perspective view, where do you think these lines are going? They're going down to an auxiliary vanishing point. Okay. So in this scene, I could have a cube that's rotated off axis like that. I could also have one that has the faces, um, you know, normal. What you might be used to and the perspective is, is completely fine. Right. The vanishing points change. <laughs> Applejack scratch his head. <laughs> we talked about auxiliary vanishing points. So remember, it was, we had a vanishing point, and then if I dot this line down, these, these lines should converge at the same point on a line that is projected down from the common vanishing point, assuming we're not rotating off the vertical axis. Okay, so that's gonna go to your auxiliary vanishing point. I mean, this is, this is more complex stuff, but, and again, I don't typically like calculate this stuff and the more you draw, the more you get used to how things should look and it's easier to do this stuff. But if you think about it that way, hey, if I draw a circle and I rotate and you could pick whatever increment, right? If you wanted your square to be like this, you can scribe your square in a circle. And if you can draw a circle in a perspective, in perspective, which is an ellipse, that's why they're so important. Ellipses, ellipses, right? Um, tons of videos on those as well. And again, if you just go to sketchaday.com slash videos, is it videos? Yeah, slash videos, you'll see my list of everything, general sketching. If I just do a quick find here and let's see, command F and I'm gonna look for ellipse. Look at that, I can just go through the page. What's the degree of an ellipse? Thoughts on using tools for ellipses or right, I need to add some more because I, I know I have some other ellipse videos but it's a start it's a good way for you to just find stuff all right so same thing here if I want to rotate this cube I can draw an ellipse here ellipse here something like that there's those four points right and it's 90 degrees is easy because I can just pick these points draw between them oops <laughs> Wrong window, my bad. You're looking at all my stats. All right, so 90 degrees is easy because I can just rotate this way. That window you just saw is basically what I see when I live stream, so I can kind of see the chat and I can see you guys and all that stuff. So nothing, nothing super secret there. All right, so that's where we now have a multi-point perspective thing happening, right? Right here, but this is all in the same uh, perspective view okay so hopefully that answers some of your questions we're going to do a quick review because i'm going to wrap it up thank you so much for joining today i'll be back tomorrow for sure after my long absence so we just covered some perspective stuff here um maybe i should use a ruler next time so i don't confuse you guys too much but again normally in a scene okay from the top it looks like this where everything's kind of pardon me Everything's kind of, uh, <clears throat> all the planes rather are parallel, if you will, to what's called a picture plane. And I haven't really talked about the picture plane before, but think of it like an invisible sheet of glass between you and what you're seeing. Okay. Actually, I did kind of explain it before um, using my, using my magic cube, but this is another cube or cuboid that I have. So in a normal um, two point perspective scene, the picture plane is parallel to an edge, or you could imagine 
there's an invisible face that this edge is touching. That gives you two point perspective. If I tilt this down with regards to the camera, the position of the camera, I now have a three point perspective because this point is closest to the picture plane. Again, all this stuff I go in depth on um, when I do my workshops, but that's a whole, it, usually they're like four hours long and really involved and I do them with groups, that kind of thing. But that's when we kind of get in the weeds. All right, so we did our snowmobile here. Like I said, it's kind of thin here in the middle. Um, this one's a bit more accurate, so I could color it up, but it's on cheap paper. So I'm just gonna leave it. And then we also, um, just warmed up with a quick busted car here so anyhow hopefully you've had some fun thanks for joining again definitely um feel free to say hi message me on instagram that's that's usually easy join the discord if you want hang out special thanks much love to the patrons and channel members once again you'll be receiving all these sketches in high resolution scans on the google drive after the stream as well as all the guides and you know, hit me up if you need brushes or anything like that. So thanks for the support. Much love um, to you. For the rest of you, I'll see you tomorrow. I mean, what are you going to watch? Lovecraft Country, Wonder Woman. No, just come hang out. Come hang out and, and, and sketch with me. All right. If you want to share your stuff, join the Discord, drop it in, show your work or the weekly sketch challenge. We were kind of keeping it holiday themed. I guess the snowmobile is technically holiday themed. So feel free to drop there. Um, I'll be I'll just be sprinkling some show and tell throughout the week. I think that's what I'll do just to give you guys some love and recognition. But thanks for all your hard work and for your support. As always, remember, passion is the process. Keep sketching. If you've learned something today, please share something with someone. And I don't mean share the channel or the video. Sit with them, draw, try and explain and work through the concept because that's how you're going to learn. Um, by doing educational things with others. I'm telling you, it'll force you to break down your process, really think about things, and stuff will just start clicking like magic. All right, take care. I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Peace and love, and see you next time on Sketch Day.